Oh, yay, spark it. My name is Brian, and welcome to WrenchFest Garage. Today, we're gonna to be working on the Ultimate Dent Side Cummins. We're gonna be finishing up this motor, prepping it to sit in the frame. We gotta go ahead and replace the oil pan gasket that I ripped when I did the rear main seal. Uh, we gotta make sure the new starter fits, and then we're gonna go ahead and set it on the frame, make sure the motor mounts and everything work. Let's get after it. So we're going to go ahead and replace this gasket because um, when I did the rear main, I dropped the pan down a little bit so I could do the whole rear main kit and I ripped the gasket. So now we got to put a new oil pan gasket on it. So we're just going to finish dropping this off. I'm not 100% sure it's going to clear going around this uh, adapter. So we may need to pull all this stuff off and start over, but I think it will because it's just barely kind of in the way. I think it'll drop down, come out, and then come down. So anyway, we're gonna find out together. Get much, but making messes. I can do that all day, every day. Not just little messes, but nice big oil messes. These are the best. But we'll get her cleaned up. No big deal. Onward and upward. So I actually drained this the other day, and just if anybody's curious, that's the oil that's just kind of residual oil that hangs in the pan and probably drains down from the motor or whatever. Evidently, when you drain your oil, you probably never get all of that out of the pan. Not a big deal, that's just the way it is. So when I was doing the rear main, I kind of messed up the gasket. You can see where it's missing right here. This is definitely messed up right there. I don't know if I did that or not. But anyway, that's why we're replacing the gasket. And I wasn't planning on it, but here we go anyway, so. Is that a bad sign or is that normal? Well, it's sludge, it's just probably, it's normal for an engine like this, with this old as this is, but it's really not what you want to see either. It's not the greatest thing. We'll clean it up a little bit. So basically, if it looks like this here, it probably looks like this other spots in the engine, you know? Mm -hmm. It's not. We're gonna be here all day. We're gonna be here all day. Maybe all week. It's been on there for many, 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 many years. Whoa, bench. Finally got all the old gasket material off of that and it was a fight. That stuff has probably been on there since 1990 and it was, yeah, it was a fight. Anyway, we got it all off, got it all cleaned up. Just now figuring out, make sure this gasket's gonna be the right one, make sure it's gonna fit. We're gonna put a, just a tiny bit of silicone, kind of hold it in place and a little bit of added insurance. Then we'll go to cleaning the bottom of the motor off and then hopefully we can get this thing on. It looks promising. Yeah, it fits. Okay. Pull this off. Okay. So come. Can I use this for a rack for a minute? Yes, that's exactly that's purpose. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I don't know if all you guys are fans of putting a little silicone on gasket. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. Kind of depends on the application. But in some situations, or maybe most situations, it's a little added insurance if you didn't get it perfectly flat or you didn't get all the crap off of it or whatever. This might save you from pulling the pan back off. Don't get too carried away. There is, you just need a little tiny bit. Try to light the holes up now, make sure everything fits good. Hopefully this gasket will stay put. Sometimes it don't hurt just to throw a couple of bolts kind of down through to make sure all your bolt holes line up. So when they ship these out, they kind of wrap them up small and they put these little, uh, uh, like little tiny roller things in them to kind of keep them from um, kinking. All right, I'm gonna let that sit for a second. So we got the pan all ready to go. Now we got to clean the bottom of the block, make sure all the gasket materials off of that and all the oil and stuff. And uh, then we can go ahead and put the pan back on. Stubborn, stubborn, stubborn. Is this the smartest thing to do? No. Not get it under an engine that's hanging on a hoist. What other ways there to do it though? Well, uh, good ways, I don't know. There's like engine uh, stand, you could like flip it over. You know, stuff like that, but I just don't have it. You don't ever got all the right tools. No. <laughs> Okay, so there's four corners on that block where different parts of the engine meet. So just put a little silicone on those on the bottom of the block. You'll see it when you're under there. Just uh, helps seal it up a little bit better. Now we gotta grab the pan, try to wiggle it up in there without messing up the gasket. Um, it should go pretty easy though. Should be no problem, I hope. Not too much drama. Just under there. Okay, don't grab the gasket. You gotta grab the pan. I know it's hard. But... Okay, I'm just kind of supporting you. I'll let you go where you need to go. Okay, go to go your way to the front. Go to go your way. Okay, keep on for a second. I'm gonna bolt in. Okay, there we go. pans on it's all snug down should be good to go I hope no leaks I hope so anyway now it's time to move on to the starter see if that fits this is a starter as per the instructions it says you can use a Ford 60 starter or a 64 starter so I did a little tiny bit of research on the internet and they said that the 64 starter is a little bit better starter uh, spins faster or whatever and it just so happens that it was actually a little cheaper. Uh, this is a brand new one. Um, I went with a brand new one because I didn't have a core to start with and whatever, it wasn't that much more money for a brand new one. So yeah, let's see if this fits. Okay, so I don't know if you can see what's going on right here, but in the instructions you are supposed, or you are supposed to trim this piece right here. You can see I've started to trim it right here and I didn't trim enough the starters not going to quite fit so we're going to go ahead and trim just a little bit more off that ear there's plenty of meat right there it's a I don't know I'd say a good three quarters of an inch before it even gets into the pan surface so I can trim off quite a bit right there and for some reason they had you trim off there I don't know if it's for different style of starters 
or what, but I ain't anywhere near that, but no big deal. That didn't hurt nothing. So we're gonna trim off a little bit right here and see if we can get the starter to go in. All right, let's see if that gets us a little closer. <laughs> no, got to take a little bit more off of there. Getting close though, kind of. Got this little lip thing on the starter. I suppose a guy could grind that off because I don't know how important that really is. Actually, that might have to come off anyway. We don't want to grind on the starter though. Okay, we're going to take a little bit more off. we go in a little bit more of an angle, see if I can take just a little bit more off. Whoa! No. Nope. I took too much out. Whoops. So yeah, we just like cut this bolt right off. I should have cut the starter. But there was a bolt that used to be right there. It'll be okay there without no more. it. Yeah. It's not great, but freaking starter better fit now. Oh, look at that. So the kit comes with these three bolts and this plate, I guess to space it out a little bit further. Not really sure, but instruction says to use it, so we'll, we'll use it. Looks like it bolts up pretty good. Yeah. All right, we got the starter bolted on. It looks like it's pretty good. When we uh, get it sitting in the truck, then we're gonna test it and make sure everything works proper. But before we do that, we need to push this Bohema forward a little bit so we can slide the engine back behind it because the frame's sitting right behind this truck. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna push this forward a little bit. Decided to throw this motor in the frame and it's currently raining why wouldn't it be but uh, anyway I just threw a garbage bag over my clutch because I didn't want my brand new clutch to get rusty and the adapters aluminum so it's fine but anyway yeah so we just threw a garbage bag over it just to be a little redneck why not Gonna scratch the brand new painted frame. Oh, it's just moving for no reason. Dang, that's gonna be close. Okay, I gotta go forward. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. It's always amazing, like when you drop a nut, how far it can go. Uh -oh. I swear they grow legs. Run, run little nut, run. So we got it sitting in there, it's sitting in there pretty good. Everything clears really nice so far. There, It's tight in a few spots, but so these motor mounts, they have quite a bit of adjustment. They will slide back quite a bit, but you can see we got good clearance on the pan. Everything looks good. The only thing I'm kind of concerned about this air conditioning compressor, um, I can stick my finger in there now, I got good clearance, 
but it may be an issue if we have to slide the motor back because it can slide back quite a bit. But if we go over here on the other side, it's not sitting in there perfectly square straight or anything. I just barely set it in there. But it looks like we got clearance from the vacuum pump, which I don't necessarily need because um, I'm running Hydro Boost. But it does look like it's got clearance. Not a lot. I can barely get my finger. Can't even get my finger in there between the gear and the vacuum pump, but there is clearance. Back here, that motor's basically slid as far, far forward as it can go, and I got good clearance in the pan and whatnot. So, yeah, it's looking pretty good. Okay, I just want to double check, make sure that this starter is going to work as it should. So, I'm just going to hook up a set of jumper cables and a battery and uh, pull off my garbage bag and just make sure that it's going to function like it's supposed to. Yep, so it kind of quit raining for a minute. I'm going to put this right here. That's going to work. Are you going to electrocute yourself? Probably. Fish. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Oh, yay, spark it. I had no idea that that's how a starter works. Like it just pushes out that gear and starts spinning it. That's pretty cool. So this is called the Bendix drive. And this is a starter ring gear. So obviously this is hooked directly to the crank and spins it over and boom. That's right what up. people mean when they mean turn it over. Yep. Just that's basically it. Spin that. Okay. I just wanted to check this starter make sure it worked properly. I kind of just had some jumper cables up here before and it was spinning over kind of slow, kind of struggling. So I was a little bit worried about it. So I've hooked up some real honest to goodness battery cables to it and then I got some jumper cables going to a second battery. So I want to see how this spins over now. Okay, that's pretty proper. Oh, now something's leaking. What are we? Oh, it's just fuel, probably. Okay. Is that what you wanted that's it to what do? I wanted to see. All I'm right, good. cool. So I think this is about as far as we're gonna get today. We got the engine sitting in there. I'm happy with the way the starter's working. Everything so far is turning out pretty good. What we need to do next is we need to get the transmission bolted on it, but that'll be another video. And then we can bolt the transfer case on, then we can set the cab on and kind of see how things are going to fit in this frame. And then go from there and continue on. So like, comment, subscribe, and thanks for watching. We appreciate it.